Hello everyone. So uh, we're back at um, uh, the Arthritis Broadcast Network's hashtag CR Arthritis um, here in Quebec City at the uh, annual scientific meeting of um, of the um, sorry of of the the Arthritis Health uh, Professions Associations and the Canadian um, uh, Association of Rheumatology. Um, so um, we uh, are now t uh, this afternoon with uh, Dr. Elizabeth Stringer, and uh, Dr. Stringer is an associate professor of pediatrics and a pediatric rheumatologist at uh, IWK Health Center and uh, Dalhousie University in Halifax. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet uh, you. Thank you for being with, with us uh, today. Um, and um, so. Uh, I know you're participating in two workshops at uh, at the at the meeting, um, and uh, but I, I'd like to first see if you can introduce yourself, your role, what's your involvement in rheumatology, um, and and why you're you're here today. Um, so I'm a pediatric rheumatologist. Uh, I've been in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, for almost uh, 15 years now, mm -hmm. and uh, my practice is a combination of uh, clinical practice, so seeing uh, patients, children, families with uh, various rheumatic diseases, um, and I'm also a clinical researcher and do a lot of collaborative work with the Canadian rheumatology, pediatric rheumatology research community, um, but over the last number of years have developed a particular interest in uh, Lyme arthritis, which is an infectious type of arthritis that is uh, unfortunately endemic in Nova Scotia and some other parts of the country. And so that's been my, I guess, main clinical and research focus. Um, and um, as you know, so I'm doing a workshop uh, around that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also involved in a research, or in a workshop on uh, decision making uh, with a couple of uh, patient partners and a researcher from Ottawa. Um, and I'm here to, uh, I love coming to the CRA. It's nice to see everyone in the community, uh, learn new things. Um, and uh, connect with people to uh, collaborate on, on various things. I'm super happy to be here in person. It was the first in-person meeting yeah. I've been yeah. at for many yeah. years. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so talking about the, the, the workshops you're, uh, yeah, you're participating in, uh, so the first one is about Lyme arthritis. And yeah. so the, the, the title is uh, Outcomes and Conundrums in Pediatric Lyme. Arthritis. Can you tell us a bit more about Lyme arthritis? Sure. Yeah. So, um, so Lyme arthritis is uh, one clinical manifestation of a condition called Lyme disease, and Lyme disease is an infectious illness and is caused by a bacteria. That bacteria is transmitted by ticks, and ticks live in our environment and um, there are certain sort of environmental limitations. They need um, other animals to survive, so they uh, have blood meal on uh, various animals, <laughs> so mice and deer, and a tick that's been infected with this bacteria called uh, Borrelia uh, happens to, unfortunately, uh, by attach onto a human, that human can get this bacteria. And so there's many different uh, clinical signs of Lyme disease. There's one that's a rash. Um, get neurologic manifestation, and one common manifestation, particularly in children, is if you get arthritis, um, usually uh, in a joint, so a couple of knee plus maybe a couple of large joints, and look just other forms of arthritis, which include rheumatologic conditions like renal arthritis. And Lyme disease originally was described in New Zealand, um, and with climate change and just migration uh, of ticks. Um, Nova Scotia, which is a province we live in, is endemic everywhere. Everywhere in Nova Scotia you are for being a tick that could Borrelia frequently get disease. So Lyme arthritis is especially in kids? Um, Lyme arthritis can present any age group. For some reason, if you look at demographics of the population when they get disease, the cases are reported, arthritis can be higher in children. Adults can get it 
but for some reason, children to be a bit predisposed to arthritis at a particular size of the disease. Mm -hmm. We have all the other, but our seems to be um, more. Mm -hmm. So with the change and, and the ticks multiplying, I guess we'll see more of that. Sure. Absolutely. So there's uh, really four areas in Canada that are known for Borrelia living in so that's Scotia and New Brunswick, and, uh, yeah, and then Northern Ontario, Quebec, Southern Manitoba, and Southern British Columbia. Uh, but we know that those tick populations are moving and moving, and so it's estimate those populations move by, you know, 40 kilometers a year forward, um, particularly with warmer temperatures, because yeah. they can survive longer. So people will be at risk for life. So, um, in, your, uh, in your work, uh, what, what do you think patients will be interested in, and what insight uh, yeah. can, can they uh, benefit from? The first thing, awareness. I mm -hmm. think that's population large uh, for pediatric medicine. I mean, really, all things mm -hmm. that need to be familiar with different patients of Lyme disease. Uh, I think one of messages for Lyme are in particular children, is it's recognized and treated with antibiotics, the evidence is actually different. Yeah. So the vast majority of children that we have resolution of arthritis after treatment with antibiotics, so it's not long-term treatment like some juvenile arthritis. Where there's about 10 percent, 10 to 15 percent of children, really all Lyme arthritis, who are treated with antibiotics transition more into an type of art and then it becomes more like a disease. And so understanding how to get that population or recognize earlier um, my research. Mm -hmm. um, so that uh, workshop where uh, you're doing uh, uh, yeah. uh, it's uh, about how to get evidence interprofessionology from is good decision well you the uh, one from uh, your group that's right uh, from the campaign uh, earlier today. And so me you know your first thing that uh, being interested in for patients you know yeah. so um, I think that we're part of the health working network is uh, making health joint decisions health care and no research that our patient shared and I think one of the things we're encouraging professionals to ask about there are people Want to be more, or more we'll never know. Ask, and I think second, I think some um, years on the time and as to an answer. In fact, the just doesn't a lot more kind of making, even if more time. Possible. I think the better as well. So, um, is there any other, any other that you do a uh, patient, um, but how uh, there is joy? Well, I think that's making it something that patient feels like able to, to I bring that doctor. Whatever the 